Good morning and welcome to Fat Cow Farm. Now, this morning we're in the um, high tunnel hoop house here and what I wanted to go through was trying to work out the, how I'm gonna sort of use our comfrey tea through the watering system. Because what I have been doing is sort of just walking around with a watering can. Now, I'm not sure if that's getting to every plant or whatever it may be but what I was thinking is that what I can do and, and I'll, I'll do a, a little bit of a test to make sure it works first is that I, I'm going to put some sort of pressure valve in the sprinkler system here and using a like a hundred mil PVC pot I can then fill the comfrey tea into that pipe and as the water passes through, I'm hoping that it takes that comfrey tea and then sends it through the sprinkler system. So it's a, there's an even spread. So that, that's the theory. <laughs> I don't know how well it's gonna work, so there's a few things that I wanna sort of get nutted out first. But I don't have enough space up top to make this actually happen, so I'm gonna come back in from the main feed from the um, water pump and have it sort of running here um, and then what I'm thinking is that you know I'll have a screw lid on it or something of the sort so I can fill that that up put the lid back on so it's still pressurized um, and then it can then take that the water can then pick up that comfrey tea and then send it through the, the sprinklers so I think there's going to be two things a part of this is that one we can certainly get a the comfrey tea through the sprinkler system. Secondly, I'm hoping that it's going to aid in pressure um, through these these sprinklers. And if that's the case, then what I'm going to do is actually change the sprinkler heads to more of a mister rather than this micro jet system. Um, because then I could get more pressure because the, the, the mister system didn't work for me. I was too low on, on pressure. So there's going to be a couple of things that um, I need to work out, but you know, it, it, it's all just fun and games here at Fat Cow Farm. <laughs> Trying to work out things that are, are different because then what I can do is then load this up and then as the, the sprinkler system turns on, because I've still got it set for, I think it's around about eight different cycles a day for 10 to 15 minutes. Now I'm not expecting all that comfrey tea to go through in one hit, so it'll be a prolonged effect over the over the day or you know whatever it may be until that, that vessel is then empty. Um, and then maybe I you know I only need to add into it maybe once every fortnight rather than spending time and watering everything, I can just fill that up and you know save myself a quite a bit of time there. So I've got a bit ahead of me. I need to start digging some holes and cutting some pipe work. And then I can go from there. All right, so I'll get a few things sorted. I'll come and find you and I'll see you soon. All right, so I've hooked into the main irrigation system here for the, the um, high tunnel hoop house and I was thinking to myself I I'll check this first <laughs> just in case it all just goes bananas now what I've done is I've just attached a, um, a drink bottle on top and what I wanted to see if the increased pressure would actually happen as a part of the sprinkler and it did. So I was I was really nervous about being low, um, but what I want to do is show you my theory. But because I'm at this point now, I can't add anything into a, into this bottle. So that's why I'm going to do it out of PVC. And you can see all the leaks and everything else. So this will obviously get a lot better. But my sprinkler pressure has gone crazy. But what's happening here is this is the air caught. Now, with the leaks, 
I've got air coming into the system. You know, so it was a little bit further down. And that was pre that's pretty tight. So as we irrigate, the water runs out until it finds that equilibrium. And then as I stop, it comes back up. Now, without water leaks, you know, I'm expecting that the water would be about here somewhere. So that becomes a, an air void, building extra pressure in the sprinkler. But this is what I'm interested in, is because if I add my comfrey tea into this, this will then run through the system. And that's what I'm pretty excited to work out. So you can see it's being used and then it builds back up. Now, what I'm thinking is that because of the, the short bursts that we've got going on in the, the hoop house, um, like I said, oh, you know, we, we, I think we've got it running for maybe 30 seconds or a minute and then it turns off and that happens quite a few times a day. So what we'll find is that we could put comfrey tea in here and psh, it, comfrey tea comes out and sprays up through the nozzles like so and then builds back up again I'm <laughs> pretty excited about this all right so what I'm gonna do now is now that I've convinced myself that this is actually going to work I'll change this into a PV, um, PVC um, PVC system with a screw lid so that I can pour my comfrey tea into it and also um, you know, I'm, I'm going to ensure that we're not going to have any leaks and, and things like that. So, that's the principle behind it. I've now pretty much squared away a non-effort comfrey tea fertiliser system for the high tunnel hoop house. I mean, you can do this anywhere. You know, this is absolutely fantastic. You can put it outside, on your veggie gardens, whatever it may be. But, you know, all you need to do is just fill it up once a week, whatever it may be, every two weeks. And then as the sprinklers turn on, that's just going to be slowly being used. I'm excited! <laughs> I can't believe it! All right, so I'll shut this all down. The sun's finally come out, so the, the cooling fans have turned on in here. It's getting warm. So, um, all right, I'll get this squared away. We'll put the PVC system on and I'll show you what that's like. So we'll go from there, so I'll see you soon. All right then, so finally got everything back together. So this is now all set up as a replacement for that drink bottle that we had. Now what I've done is I've got a isolation tap here and I've also got a union. Now it's just so with that union valve, we can take it off and put it back together and things like that. But also with the ball valve, what we can then do is that when you have your watering can and you pour your liquid fertilizer, comfrey tea, whatever it may be, in this vessel here, you know, what we really want to try and achieve is to get about three quarters. Now, originally what I did is I had a quite a large one here and I think I measured it at 700. So I was thinking that, you know, maybe I put five liters of comfrey tea in. But, <laughs> but what happened is that when I turned the pressure on, there was just too much pressure and poof, the whole joint <laughs> the whole joint got wet. So what I, and I was, and I was thinking to myself, yeah, there was just too much um, in that vessel. So what the idea being now is that I've cut this down to 350 in, um, in height, which gives me a three litre container now, and I'm leaving the 50 mil or, you know, 75 mil or so back to that line um for the air pressure and so you can just pour it in you've got your screw cap that just sits on top like so and when you're ready you can then turn the ball valve on or off and i'm just going to keep it off for a minute because i, I want to load it up and um and then so that way at least you can then regulate what you want to do with your comfrey tea. So if you think that, oh yeah, no, nah, 
we've been spraying out and, and everything's great and I want to give everything a bit of a rest. So then you, I've got an option now of turning that off. So what I will do though is that, um, you know, the, the, I suppose the, the system being is that I'll put my Comfrey T, I'll put my three litres in and then I'll turn it on. All right, and just let that do its thing. Um, because there will be times where maybe you just want to use the hose but not have the mix in the system. All right, so, you know, you, you don't want to waste it too much. So you've got the option then of just shutting it down when you need to. So, you know, I'm pretty pumped up about this. And um, so I now, you know, I can get everything up and running. Um, but yeah, don't make that same mistake I made where I made it too big. <laughs> just, just went everywhere. It was just too much volume, too much um, airlock in there. So even with it, um, you know, because I was mucking around and just trying to work out some, you know, oh, if I'm going to fill it to the top. But what's happening is that that, um, that water or that mix goes into the system and then you've got that airlock again. So, um, yeah, it was just blowing everything apart. So, yeah, had to reduce it in, in size. And now I've got the options of basically turning it on when I want to. And I think one of the, the most important things that I'm sort of thinking is that now that I can turn it on periodically is that depending on what I'm irrigating is also going to um, have the effect. So, yep, we've got our overhead sprinklers on here, um, but there may be times where I've, I've got my drip line irrigation running and I just want to focus on that. So, you know, there's a few things that you can switch, you know, make it suit to, to your own sort of system. But everything's back together. I do have to get a little off stand bracket for this. Um, so next time I'm in town, I'll get that and I'll remove that wire. I just wanted it there in place just to sort of keep everything together. But we're ready to rock and roll, mate. So you've got yourself fertilized irrigation system ready to rock and roll. So for all about another extension to the um, high tunnel hoop house and fertilizing with your Comfrey tea, without having to walk around with a, a um, watering can, like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.